Thank you. Thank you. So you're ready to sleep with me? <laughs> Night, that's what it's about. Your ability to relax, your ability to focus and concentrate, and your ability to take a journey into your imagination. So what we're going to do is ask you to imagine something. I want you to imagine, to pretend, to emotionalize that you all have a half of a lemon. You know that a lemon is yellow. You know it has uh, bumps on it. And you know that there is juice inside of a lemon, right? So I'll count to three. You imagine you're biting a lemon with me. One, two, three. You put it in your mouth. A little out. All on. Now, for those of you who have never seen anything like this, I'm sure there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> For those of you who really don't know what's going on, I'm sure a number of you in the audience are going, I bet you paid him $10 before the show to do that, right? And the other half are about ready to rent their pants and head for the door. I mean, how? I didn't do anything, right? At the end of every show that I have ever done, and I've done many, many shows, about 1,500 to be exact, uh, at the end of the show, I leave a suggestion with all the people that have been hypnotized that if you are ever at another show of mine any time in the future and you see me up on a stage, bite a lemon, you will do one thing because you want to do it more than anything in the world. And that's called a post-hypnotic suggestion. And a post-hypnotic suggestion to trigger an action like this is exactly the way we work with self-improvement, by the way. Now, I'm going to find out some information here. Uh, if you were involved in the show one year ago, your right arm will go up in the air now. Drop your arm and sleep. If you were involved two years ago, your arm will go up. Drop your arm and sleep. If you were involved three years ago, your arm will go up in the air. Drop your arm and sleep. If you were involved four years ago, your arm will go up. And drop your arm and sleep. If you were involved more than four years ago, your arm will go up. Okay, so we got back to four years. Interesting. So at the count of three, you'll open your eyes. Should I tell you to go back to sleep? You will go back to sleep instantly and deeply. Now, I want you to listen to the sound of a harmonica being played down the scales. When you hear the sound of this harmonica, I want you to let it remind you of how relaxed you are. Deeper. Now, listen to my voice. At the count of three, you're going to open your eyes. If I tell you to go back to sleep, you will go back to sleep instantly and deeply. But if I blow the harmonica and you're back in the audience, you will go back to sleep instantly and deeply in the audience. Unless I tell you uh, individually, you will not come back up on stage when I work with the rest of the audience. You will stay in your seat. But if I blow the harmonica, you will go back to sleep. At the count of three, wide awake, full of energy, and possibly very surprised. One, two, three. Wide awake, guys. Wide awake. How are y'all doing? How many of you had made a decision that you were not going to come back up here tonight? Good. Well, we know how powerful your will is. Uh, how many of you, I'm very curious, how many of you, your, your heart started to beat very fast just as I picked up that lemon, right? You know, what is happening is your, your, your body and your mind is preparing for this. That's, again, part of what's called a post-hypnotic suggestion. Everybody feel good? Yeah, okay, okay. Good. Uh, what is your first name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Good. I want all of you, what's your first name? Jill. Jill. I want all of you to go back, take your seat in the audience. Let's give them a big hand. What's your, what's your name? Nima. Were you surprised you were up here at all? Yeah. Thanks for helping me out. Sleep deep on your feet. Oh. Wide awake, wide awake. Stand up. 
Stay on your feet. Sleep. On your feet. Stay on your feet and sleep. Let yourself go. Deeper. Good. Now, let me ask a question. How many of you in the audience actually had something happen in your mouth just before I bit the lemon, when I bit the lemon, or slightly thereafter? You may have either tasted a lemon or kind of had a reaction. Raise your hands real high. Oh, this is going to be so easy tonight. <laughs> if you had a reaction to that, now think about this for a second. Here comes some fellow out on stage. You have no idea who I am. And I ask you to imagine something. The majority of you created a physiological change in your body in less than a tenth of a second. That's pretty powerful stuff. In less than a tenth of a second, we can change our blood flow, our heart rate, and our skin temperature. So what you've done out of nothing is create something, and that's what tonight is about. That's what suggestion is about. That's also the first stage of hypnosis. Anyone who actually had something happen in your mouth, uh, a reaction to the lemon, has achieved the first stage of hypnosis, and it's called awakening suggestion. I want you to leave here with the sense of yourself and the power that you have to make a difference uh, with whatever you choose to do, whether it's sports or losing weight or improving your memory. Now, this is important, so pay attention. <laughs> Count of three, I want you to open your eyes, take your left hand, put it out in front of you, palm open, facing up towards the ceiling. Using your imagination, I want you to look at the palm of the left hand and imagine or pretend a small gelatin capsule. Take your right hand, cover it over, intertwine your fingers, turn your hand sideways so the capsule could not possibly fall out, extend your arms straight, focus and hold your attention on your hands and listen to my voice. Now, the only problem that anyone is going to have is when you're in a group situation, people feel a little insecure, the tendency is to look to the person next to you to see if you're doing this correctly, you know? I mean, it, R really not difficult, is it? Uh, you may try too hard. People really want to get into this, so they're out there trying hard. Uh, it's the antithesis of trying tonight. You just kind of flow with what's happening. Now, there is another request that I have, is that you, if you're chewing gum, do not participate tonight, uh, or get rid of your gum, because sometimes the people that zone out tonight don't know they're going to. So, you know, then they inhale their gum, it goes in the lungs, paramedics come in, disrupts the show, you know, it not get rid of the gum. So remember, after the relaxation, again, you'll end up like this. At the count of two, you're going to open your eyes, and you're going to, the, the, for you, two and a half hours have, going to have gone by. You've been up here for the entire time. You've missed the entire show, but you won't remember any of that. Then I will show you my watch to prove it. You can look at your watch, too, and the time on your watch will be almost 11 o'clock. It will surprise you very much, but you won't remember that I told you that. Wide awake. Hi. How are you feeling? Do you realize how long you've been up here? Look at this. Check this out. You've been here two hours. We've worked. <laughs> so you are the first and the last person. Does that, does, that, does that make you feel a little strange that that much time has gone by? <laughs> yeah. You're shaking a little bit. Stand your feet, sleep. You're a five-year-old little boy. At the count of two, you're going to skip back to your chair in the audience, sit in your seat in the audience, and the moment you sit in your seat, you're going to be surprised that you came from the stage back to your seat. You're going to be back to your normal age. So at the count of two, a five-year-old little boy, just have fun. One, two, wide awake. There you go. So you ready to do it? Sit up straight in your chairs. Put your feet flat on the floor, arms loose in your lap, and close your eyes. With your eyes closed, the first thing I want you to do is to be aware of how you feel. One, two, and three. Open your eyes, your left hand out in front of you, palm open a small gelatin capsule. Take your right hand, cover over the left hand, intertwining your fingers, turn your hand sideways, extend your arms straight. Now focus on your hands, not at me. As you look at your hands, I want you to apply a little pressure. Hold the pressure. Good, you've just broken the capsule. Inside of the capsule is a very strong, fast-drying glue. A little tighter, the body's very strong. Now, as you look at your hands, I want you to imagine that the two hands have actually glued into one solid rock, one unit, one solid unit, impenetrable. Good, I'm going to count from one to five. With each number I say, your hands are going to grow tighter and tighter and tighter together. At the count of five, you're going to try to take your hands apart. You're going to find it absolutely impossible. Just believe, one. Two, three, four, and five. Try to take them apart. They squeeze together harder. You try to take them apart. They squeeze together harder, 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 harder. Now, if they stuck together, stand up where you are. Stand up if they stuck together. Good. Now, 
I want you all to come up, stand on stage anywhere you choose. Come up, be careful. You can form lines anywhere you want to, it doesn't matter. Good, I want all the people that are up here with their hands stuck together to focus on my hand. Get in a position to see if you can focus on my hand. Focus, kind of move around if you can't see it, okay? I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, I'm going to snap my fingers. When I snap my fingers, your hands will come apart. Focus, one, two, three. Now, take them apart. Good. Too bad for you. Okay, all the people who, who still stuck together come to the front of the line. You other guys move back here. All right, close your eyes, all of you. Take a big breath. Inhale. Good. Exhale. Good. As I count from one to two, just let your arms fall down to your side and relax with your eyes closed. One and two. Relax. <laughs> Stay asleep. Relax. 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 Relax your arms. Good. Open your eyes. Good. Hold my mic for me. Good. <laughs> Good. Stay asleep. Stay asleep. Okay. Stay asleep. Stay asleep. Wide awake here. Wide awake. Just move over just a little bit. <laughs> just turn, turn to your right. Right. I'm going to touch your forehead. You're going to fall back. Fall on a big soft white cloud. And sleep. And sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep. Sleep. You know what? When the guys see me do this, they go, teach me! Wide awake. Wide awake. You okay? Good. Okay. Hold it. Oh, oh wide awake. Hold that. <laughs> sleep deep. Sound asleep. Let yourself go. Stay on your feet. Good. Everybody else's hands apart. You're the last one, eh? <laughs> Close your eyes. Relax your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and relax. Good. Excellent. OK, at the count of three, everybody wide awake. One, two, three. Wake up, guys. Good. OK? Everybody awake? Look at this. He's still holding my mic. I think I'll just like use him for the show. <laughs> All right. By the way. By the way. Hip, 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 hip. Ramp. <laughs> Beep. By the way. There you go. Hey. <laughs> All right. The longest I've ever kept anybody hypnotized on their feet is about eight and a half hours. Look, is everybody okay up on stage? You feel good? <laughs> sleep. Let yourself go. Those of you who did not go back to sleep up on the stage, you may take your seat in the audience. Thank you very much. A little deeper. <laughs> deeper still. Deeper still. Let yourself go. When I touch you, take a seat and fall asleep. Wide awake. Wide awake. Sit right there. Fall asleep. Wide awake. Wide awake. All right. Take a seat right there. Fall asleep. Wide awake. Wide awake, good, good. Wide awake, take a seat, fall asleep. <laughs> Why don't you just open your eyes, huh? Pull your seat forward there about three inches. Good, if you would. Good, sit in your chair and fall asleep. Okay, <laughs> wide awake. Everyone else on stage, at the count of three, you'll open your eyes. One, two, three, wide awake. Okay, wide awake, wide awake. Hello, hi, thanks for coming up here. The people that are standing, you can take your seat in the audience. Thanks a lot, let's give them a big hand. Wide awake? Hi. You can take a seat in the audience. Thank you. Okay. Sleep. Hiding in the dark. <laughs> I didn't see him either. Wide awake? Wide awake? Uh, you just stay right where you're at. You know, people don't want to wake up. I figure they want to stay in this state. Probably zoned out most of the time anyhow. It's all right. Okay. Everybody all right now? Sleep in the audience. Sleep in the audience. Deeper. Deeper. One last time. Now, 
All of you in the audience, listen to the sound of my foot hitting the stage twice. Listen. Next time you hear this sound, it's going to feel like the person directly behind you has reached under you and given you somewhat of a severe pinch. You're going to stand up, turn around, and give them a piece of your mind. Now, you're not going to physically touch the person in any way whatsoever, but you will vocally give them that, but you will not remember that I told you that. Now, here's what I want you to do. The person seated to the right of anyone sleeping, when I count to three and say the word now, touch their shoulder and have them just open their eyes. So at the count of three, wide awake in the audience. One, two, three, now. Wide awake in the audience. Wide awake. Is everybody awake? Everybody awake? Okay. All of you up on stage, you're no longer on a stage. You have just won a trip aboard a starship. The Starship Quantum. A starship that travels almost with the speed of thought. It is absolutely safe, and you are in for one of the greatest adventures of your life. In a few moments, I'm going to count from 10 to 1. With each number I say, you're going to go deeper and deeper into relaxation and sleep. And when I say 1, I'm going to say blast off. And when I say blast off, you're going to feel a tremendous amount of pressure pushing you back in your seat as we lift off the launch pad to outer space. We'll break through the outer atmosphere of Earth, and the body will become totally weightless, even at the cellular level. The arms and legs will begin to drift up in the air as if like magic. You would drift up in the air as if like magic, except for one thing. You're strapped in your seat with a seat belt. I want you to check the buckle on your belt now. Please, please check the buckle on your belt now. Good. Shoulder, Shoulder harness. harness. Good. We're ready to go to outer space. And the count is about to begin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and blast. Pressure hits the body. Full thrust, 85%. 90% thrust. 100% thrust. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way. It's a go. The green flight. We are off and running closer and closer to the outer atmosphere of Earth. We go. Hang in there. Hang in there. And we've broken through the body totally weightless. The lighter the body becomes, the arms, the legs, drifting, no cares, no worries. And as we journey through time and space, we leave behind us on the planet Earth our cares, our worries, our should-tos, our ought-tos. We leave behind the fear of rejection, the fear of change, the fear of failure. We leave behind envy, jealousy. We leave behind all negative emotions and feelings, and we enter another dimension, a dimension of the imagination. At the count of two, I'm going to press a button which is going to encompass you inside your own individual bubble of gravity. This is going to be a plexiglass shell that will surround your body. You'll be able to see in any direction I describe, even though your eyes are physically closed. And the reason I'm putting you inside of this shell of plexiglass is I'm going to beam you down to a couple very special planets. The count of two, gravity back to normal. One, two, gravity back to normal. You can reach out, you can touch the bubble, surrounds the body. And there's a large instrument panel directly in front of you with multicolored buttons and lights. Don't touch the buttons, please, until I describe their use. In a few moments, you're going to push one of those buttons. You are actually going to dematerialize and you are going to be beamed down and then rematerialize 30 feet above a yet undiscovered planet by the name of the planet Nemu. Now, there is only one negative thing about this. Every time I dematerialize you, I have to rematerialize you, or I have to pop you back into existence. And every time you pop back into existence, you're going to find that the palms of your hands and the bottoms of your feet itch for approximately six seconds. Now, we don't know why this happens. This is just some one of the bugs of the system we haven't ironed out yet. You ready? Okay, at the count of two, reach out, push the green button. One, two, press it. Good. You've activated the coordinates. Good, good. Six seconds to dematerialization. Five, four, three, two, one. Down we go. Pop. Back into existence. 30 feet. 
above the planet's surface. Your capsule is moving across the planet's surface at an incredible rate. If you stop, you move up, off to your left. If you look up, about 80 feet high, there are giant flowers. Interesting. Wait a minute, they just sprouted little heads. Two arms. Whoa, and two legs. They got a big smile on that face and the arms waving at you. They are the happiest flowers in the universe. Whoa, that's, that's wild. We've got to move on now. Whoa, hold it, something's happened. There's been an electrical outage of some kind. The air conditioning inside of your capsule has been cut off. What was perfect temperature has just jumped up to 92 degrees. There's something wrong, we're working on it from the mother ship. Get yourselves comfortable. 98 degrees, 102 degrees, 104 degrees. Wait a minute, the air conditioning came back on. Whoa, temperature's dropping. What happened? Something happened. It's down to 60 degrees. There's ice forming around the vents, 50 degrees. I'm going to dematerialize you and rematerialize you inside of a giant capsule altogether. Dematerialize, three, two, one, back, pop back into existence. Wow, you're all together. 42 degrees, use the person next to you to get warm. Your life depends on it. Press the red button, the red button, quickly, quickly. Good. Temperature's going back up, 65, 68, 69, 73 degrees. Temperature's back to normal. Excellent. Excellent. Good. We're going to beam you back up to the, to the, to the mother ship now. Uh, pr press the, the white button. White button. Just give it a press. Good. Back up we go. Three, two, one. Pop. Back into existence on the ship. I'm taking you out of your capsules and sleep. Let yourself go. As we journey through time and space. Now let me tell you just something that's very interesting. When I do this as a demonstration for the Medical Association, American Medical Association. We have the instruments to measure the change in body temperature, and people actually do change their body temperature. Uh, and that's the way I work with, with cancer patients, is you teach them to heat up their hands and then touch certain parts of their bodies. So it's very, remember this, about everything is human performance and all the things that we do, it's really all in the mind. Sleep. The next time you hear my foot stomp on the stage twice, what you felt before, you're going to feel twice as strong as you did before. However, this time it is going to feel so good. I mean good, that you are going to stand up, look at that person behind you and say, thank you. And you won't remember that I told you that. So at the count of three, wide awake in the audience only, touch the person's right shoulder. So at the count of three, wide awake in the audience only, one, two, three. Wide awake in the audience. Wide awake in the audience. Good. Do you know that no drug, and this is a physiological, biochemical fact, no drug can get you higher than your mind can. And there are certain things in the brain called endorphins, which means morphine within. So if you know how to trigger these through whatever, meditation, self-hypnosis, physical activity, and other ways, you can actually get yourself high. Now. I don't expect you to believe this, so I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to get these people higher than they've ever been in their lives up here tonight. So, when I touch your forehead, after I have you open your eyes, those of you who drink alcohol, I'm just gonna put one finger on your forehead, those of you who drink alcohol will suddenly find that you're two or three times more smashed than you've ever been. But all positive, nothing negative at all, nothing negative. And those of you who get high any other way will be two to three times higher than you've ever been in your life. That way, all positive, nothing negative. Those of you who have never been high in your life, you're going to be high anyhow. All positive, nothing negative. But you won't remember that I told you that. So when I touch your forehead, 
That will be the action. Now, there is a pink button on your instrument panel. If at the count of two you would reach out and you would you would just push the button uh, on the on the panel, the pink button, we will dematerialize you and beam you down. Let's see if he wants to wake up yet. Wide awake. Do you wanna do you wanna just stand there and relax? <clears throat> are you happy? Okay, sleep, just stay right where you are. Good. So when I have you push that big button, you're going to dematerialize, you're going to be beamed down to the surface of the planet Quantum, home base of the starship Quantum in a planet where dreams become reality. One, two, reach out, push the button. Good, you've activated the computer coordinate panel, and down we go, three, two, one. Pop, back in existence, right on the planet. If you smell the air, you can smell your favorite flower. It smells wonderful. And if you reach down, you can pick that flower and smell it. And it smells more fabulous and fantastic than any aroma that you've ever smelled before. And the flower, as opposed to most, most flowers, doesn't die. It actually doesn't die. It's a living kind of thing. And if you put it on your shoulder, it will like grasp onto your shoulder and you'll be able to smell it whenever you want. What kind of flower do you smell? Jasmine. A jasmine. Nice. Nice scent. What kind of flower do you smell? Rose. Rose. Good. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Great. So at the count of two, you'll open your eyes on the planet Quantum. You're going to see a very strange being kind of floating around on stage with a thing on his shoulder. Just one of the residents, so don't kind of ignore that. One, two. Wide awake, guys. How do you feel? I feel good? Everybody awake? Oh, somebody isn't awake. Touch his shoulder. Wide awake. Ah, yeah, you guys. Good. Good. How y'all feeling? Feeling good? Sure. Great. How you feeling? Good? Boop. Yes. <laughs> what do you think? What? Is that nice? Yeah. Do you have any idea what's going on with her? No. It's pretty weird, huh? Beep. <laughs> do, you do you believe this? Beep. Oh, yes. Oh. Beep, beep. Beep. Boink. How you doing? Good. Better. You. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. Boo. 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 <laughs> Boo. 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 How do you feel? Okay. Good? Okay? <laughs> so now if you watch very carefully, you'll know the people not to invite to your party. How you doing? Great. <laughs> Is there, uh-huh. Definitely should never touch anything. How are you feeling? Oh, you doing okay? Mm. What? Is there anyone who would like to get twice as high as they are? This may be your last call. You're only going to be able to do this once, but at the count of two, if you pull on your right earlobe, you will actually get twice as high as you are, but you can only do this once. One, two, do it. Woo!
Man, that would drive me nuts. Sleep. Oh, you can't remember your name. The harder you try to remember your name, the more impossible it's going to be. For you, your name no longer exists. You can't remember it, and you won't remember it, but you won't remember that I told you you can't remember it. So wide awake, you're still high, feel good? I got to straighten you guys out. This is a... Anybody who's on the floor is now totally straight. What are you guys doing? Come back up here, sit in your chairs. Whoa, is this normal behavior? Do you, does this surprise you? Yeah. Does it surprise you? I don't know. Sleep deep, let yourself go. Deeper. You can't remember the number six. The harder you try to remember the number six, the more impossible it's going to be. For you, the number six no longer exists. You won't remember that I told you that. You can't hear it, you can't say it, you can't see it, but you won't remember that I told you that because you're half as high as you were. Wide awake and feel good. Wide awake and feel good. 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 Everybody, you okay? You sure? You look a little like spaced. Are you all right? What is your name? Mike. Sleep. You can't remember your name. The harder you try to remember your name, the more impossible it's going to be. For you, your name no longer exists. But you won't remember that I told you that because you're a little high again, wide awake, and feel good. Tell them to be quiet. Sleep. Deeper. Wide awake. Sleep. Too noisy for me. You can't remember your name either. How do you try to remember your name? The more impossible it's going to be for you. You're, for you, your name no longer exists. Wide awake, feel good. Hi. By the way, I want to ask you a question. Where were you born? Do you remember where were you born? Here, Willamette. Willamette. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah. How many? One. One brother or yeah. sister? Brother. What's your brother's name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> What is your name? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All right, you, you work on it. What is your name? I don't know. What? How, come, how could you possibly? Come on, you, you've got to know your name. No. Do you care that you don't know your name? Yes. I can't help you out. Go down here, check everybody out. How you doing there? Well, I got bad news for you. Look at somebody erased it off your ID, man. They also took your number. There's nothing on any of your IDs. Your credit card's been shattered. Your Barney card is empty. Your fake ID doesn't have anything. How you doing, Doug? Do me a favor. What? Take your hands, put them out, touch your thumbs. Touch your thumbs just like this. Good. Count your fingers from one to ten. Real easy task. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Seven. Right. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Oh, shit. Uh, what? Wait. Okay. okay. One. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Wait, Lord, help me, help me here. Okay, let's go. You have an extra finger, I'm telling you. Okay, you can't remember the number seven. You can't remember the number seven. Go ahead, help her. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You have eleven? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, shut up. You I do not. No, I don't. You can't. Look at it. Count, count. All right, you count. All right, you count. I'll keep track. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven? Wait. You didn't count that 
I don't like that one. You don't like that one? What, what happened? Come here for a second. Uh, what's, what's two and two? Four. What's four and four? Eight. Good. What's eight and eight? Sixteen. Very good. What's three and three? So do you feel better now? Mm -hmm. so I still got a question to ask you. What's three and three? Seven. Okay. Now, this is going to be interesting. At the count of two, you're going to tell her what three and three is, and she will not hear you. Now, I want you to watch her physiology. She will not hear you. So at the count of two, tell her. One and two. Six. What is three and three? Seven. Did you hear her? Did you hear her? Did you hear something from the audience? No. Well, okay. Well, just relax. That's okay. No. What? Water. Oh, you're thirsty? Yeah. When I touch your, when I touch your, your side of your head, you're going to feel like you just had two glasses of cool water. Whew. Better? Yeah. Thank you. Right. It's kind of neat. Uh, do you like money? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys still going? Yeah. How come? We're going to figure it out. Okay, you figure it out. I got to talk. I got to talk to this fellow here. Stand up for a second. Come here. Let them work on this. Can you hold a dollar bill? Yeah. Good. Hang on to it. Weighs 2,000 pounds. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. What? Can you get it off? Oh, it's on your, on your fingers. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what. Do you drink socially? Yeah. What do you drink? <laughs> Anything that's around. <laughs> Anything that's around. Uh, if I were to buy you something so you could, like, just, you know, uh, do a weekend thing, what would you want? Bottle of vodka. Bottle of vodka. What kind? Stoli? Gordon's. Gordon's. How much is a bottle of Gordon's vodka? Uh, about nine bucks. So if I give you ten, if you hold this, you can have it. Is that a deal? Yeah. Okay. Here. 2,000 pounds. Can you get it off me again? It's on your finger. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> What'd you do to him? Oh. So, so let me tell you what. I'll put down another. All right. I'll put down some fives, some tens, another ten. You pick it up. You can have it. 2,000 pounds. Here's another. Are you motivated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come back around the other way here. Here's another 10. Here's a 20. Here's another 20. Here's another 20. Here's another 20. Here is a 50. See, it's not heavy, though. But it's hot. Whoa! Gee. Here is another $200. Okay? You give up? No. You go for it again. Hot. Whew. Here, I'll tell you what I'll do. Whoa, magic. Okay. Here we go. Very hot. Here. It's two, 350. You don't want the money? You can sit down and relax for a second. You guys like fireworks? You like fireworks? At the count of two, you're going to look up. Only on this planet could this happen. See the most incredible display of fireworks you've ever seen. At the count of two. One, two. Just spell out all your names, except for you. Wait a minute. There are little flying saucers coming out of the cloud of smoke from the fireworks. They're very small. They're about a foot and a half wide, and they're dive bombing you. They're gone. You know where they are? Under your chairs. Whoa. Wait, they aren't green people. They're, they're your best friend miniaturized. Your best friend three inches tall. Is that bizarre? Yeah. They could get easily hurt. Actually, you know, I told an untruth. They're actually your worst enemy. <laughs> Oops, made a mistake. They were your best friend. No, they were your worst enemy. It's OK. You. OK, you got rid of them. Good, you can sit down.
This could only, I want you all to look at me for a second. Look, sleep. <laughs> Let yourself go. Relax, relax as we journey through time and space. So you can see, think about this. If I can make somebody not pick up money, imagine what you could have people do. I mean, you have the power to, to exert such strength mentally that nobody learns to tap into it because nobody takes the time to learn the technology. It's all available to all of us. You know why? It's all in the mind. What happened over, what, what happened? Come here. Come here. What, what happened? His back grabbed my ass. I would sit in a different seat. We're going to demonstrate how belief can create miracles. All of you, all of you listen very carefully. You're back in time in the mid-1700s in Paris in a, actually a large theater. And you've been entertaining for many, many years. And I'll tell you how you're going to be entertaining in a second. But just know this, whenever I say the word freeze, you will freeze in place. You all are the greatest can-can dancers in the world. You can form a chorus line and do a can-can and watch each other and be coordinated like no other group. That's why people come from all over the world to see you. So at the count of three, shot full of energy, right out here, and entertain the troops. One, two, three, wide awake! <laughs> Eyes closed. We move to the mid 1800s. You're the greatest ballet company in the world dancing before the crown heads of Europe. Nineteen sixty two, Chicago, Illinois, the Peppermint Lounge in the World Championship Twist Contest. Go. Freeze. Eyes closed. The greatest break dancers in the world for your entertainment. Go! Please! Eyes closed. They say there's a dance in the world that is erotic. Sensual and sexy. The Lombada. And we have the greatest Lombada dancers for your entertainment tonight in the world. Go! Eyes closed. Solid as a rock from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. <sighs> Count of two, you're going to go back, sit in your seats, and fall asleep. But listen carefully. You must sit down together. If you sit down before anyone else, you'll pop right back up out of your chair. Before you go back to your seats, you all are suddenly transforming into something else. You are actually, this is incredible, you are members of the greatest show on earth. You, at the count of three, will open your eyes and will either be a clown, an acrobat, 
an elephant, <laughs> a lion, or whatever else. But you know what? Part of you has already made that choice. So before we go back to our chairs, and you'll remember that instruction, ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment, and you cheer up these kids. <laughs> Cheered me up. <laughs> the greatest show on earth, go! Eyes closed, slow motion, go. Is she doing? You may have to help that girl down on the end. She's. Give him a big hand. Let yourself go deeper and deeper into relaxation and sleep. Deeper in the audience and up on stage. In a few moments, everybody's going to wake up. Listen to me carefully. When I wake you up at the count of three, you'll be able to remember your name. You'll be able to remember the number six, and you'll be able to remember the number seven, and all your ID is back to normal. A foot stomping on a stage will no longer have any effect on you. A harmonica blowing will no longer have any effect on you. And uh, let's see if that's it. The lemon? No, we'll keep the lemon. We'll add on to this. If there's still a suggestion for any of you up on stage, which is uncomfortable, uncomfortable for you that you would like removed, raise your hand. Good. Everything is back to normal. Excellent. Now, listen to me carefully. When you go home and go to sleep tonight, all of you who are sleeping now will have the best night's sleep you have ever had in your life. You will, that doesn't mean you won't. <laughs> You'll wake up fully refreshed. You'll feel absolutely fantastic. You will not be able to be hypnotized by anyone unless you consider them a professional hypnotist or someone you trust. Not somebody playing around with this at all. will have no reaction at all. But when you open your eyes, you will remember every single thing that took place here this evening. Everything. In the spirit that it was intended. Good, clean fun. If anyone laughs or jokes at you, you will laugh and joke back with them. You will not be embarrassed in any way whatsoever because you had a great adventure, you feel absolutely fabulous, and we're the very, very, very best of friends. Nod your heads if you agree with me. I love it. I want you all of you that are in this state right now to uh, remember what it was like when I came out and bit a lemon. Get that image in your mind. That image is totally part of you now. So our, if you are ever at another show of mine, and if I'm around, you'll be there. And if you're in good health and you're in the audience, and you see me bite on that lemon, you will do one thing because you want to do it more than anything in the world. You will jump up out of your seat, race up on stage, take an empty chair, and fall to sleep. No matter what anyone says, no matter what anyone does, if you see me bite a lemon, but you must be in person and must be in good health. You'll come right up and fall asleep. Nod your heads if you understand me. Good. Uh, the, the two girls that were up here that I asked their names at the very beginning of the first group was Jill and who was the other? Cheryl. Okay. Jill and Cheryl, this does not apply to you, what I'm about to say. I'll have another suggestion for you, too. 
Now, listen to these words. Good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to these words. Good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just let these words sit for a moment. All of you up on stage, listen carefully to the following statement. If you feel that you have lived a past life, that you have been reincarnated, and that the experience of living that past life will allow you to understand or get rid of a fear or a phobia, I want your right arm to go up in the air now. And when I touch you, you will remain asleep, right? When I touch you, when I wake everyone else up, you will remain up on stage. Let your arm fall and sleep. So you will remain. When I wake everybody else up, <laughs> I gotta do this. This guy's great. Relax your arm. You will remain asleep. And you will remain asleep. Good. Now listen to these words again. <laughs> Let your arm fall down and sleep. Hi. Right. Stay on your feet and sleep. Except for the two girls that I mentioned before, listen to the words again. Good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Later on, you'll all be back in the audience, and when I say good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you will do one thing because you want to do it more than anything in the world. When I say good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you will jump out of your seat, shout out, I love you, and kiss the person next to you regardless of sex. So I say good night, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You'll jump up, shout out, I love you, kiss the person next to you regardless of sex, except you won't remember that I told you that. Except for Jill and Sheila, when I say good night, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Cheryl, excuse me. Uh, Jill and Cheryl, when I say good night, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you will jump out of your seat, shout out, I love you, race up on this stage and give me a great big hug. Kiss. All right, kiss. All right, all right. I really try to be so good most of the time. Uh, so, all of you as I count from one to three, let the energy flow back in your body. Wide awake, feel good, feel wonderful. One, energy flowing back in the body. Two, three, wide awake. <laughs> Everybody else up on stage, you can take your seat in the audience, let's give them a big hand. <laughs> By the way, you can take a seat in the audience. The counter two, and I'm touch the center of your back. Open your eyes. One, two. Wide awake. Wide awake. Wide awake. Are you awake? Uh huh. Yeah, he's got no eyes. <laughs> huh. All right, just let him sleep. Okay, listen to me for a second. What I'm going to do before we uh, do the age regression, uh, could we bring out the chalkboard, please? And just put it right center. Now, the three of you that are sleeping, uh, and I have a very special form of communication. You'll stand at the board, and when I tell you to go back to sleep, you will go back to sleep instantly and deeply. Instantly and deeply. One, two, three, guys. Wide awake. Hi. Up. Wide awake. Hi. Come on over here with me. Hi. How old are you? Twenty. Twenty. Would you do me a favor? On this line right here, would you write your name like you would sign a personal check? And how old are you? Twenty. Would you also write a name like you would sign a personal check? Good. And how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen. Would you write here, full, full signature? <clears throat> Very good. Very good. Stay on your feet, hold on to your chalk, and sleep. You're 12 years old. You're 12 years old. Everything is exactly as it was when you were 12 years old. You're safe. You're happy. You're here with me. You're 12 years old when I touch you wide awake. Wide awake? How old are you? Twelve. Hi. Would you put your name right here for me, please? Good. Wide awake. How old are you? Twelve. 
Would you put your name right here for me, please? Full signature. And by the way, how old are you? Um, 12. Would you put your name right here for me, please? Now watch the physiology of the body. Watch the movement. Watch the way they hold the chalk. Very good. Would you just come right over here, stand right here, and sleep? What do you want, speed or accuracy? Twelve-year-old, right? Got to be perfect. Very good. Very good. Maureen, would you just come over here and just stand right here? Hold on to your chalk there and sleep. Sean, would you come over here and just stand right there and sleep? Uh, notice that his name has become legible at 12 years old. <laughs> as, as Maureen's has. I mean, I didn't know that her name was Maureen. It looks like <laughs> yeah. But this is the cute one, and this is what happens, uh, typical, with a little heart uh, here and, and little smiley faces on the end. Isn't that sweet? So, so you're all five years old. You're five years old today. Actually, you were five years old yesterday. You were five years old yesterday. If you had a birthday party or a celebration of any kind, nod your head yes. Oh, three. Thank you. You know, somebody went, no, last night I was worried about the person crying. So, okay, great. So uh, you're five years old yesterday. Wide awake now. How old are you? Five. Can, would you come over here? Can you put your name on the board or your first name for me? And then draw me a little picture down here and just have fun. And uh, Sean, wait, 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 wait. How old are you? I'm five. <laughs> and can you, can, you, uh, can you put your name here for me? Yeah. Good. And draw me a little picture down here. And wide awake. How old are you? Five. Five. And can you put your name here for me, right in that area right here? And then draw me a little picture down in here, if you would. Hi, right, that's a cute little picture. Do you, do you have any pets at home? Two kitties. Two kitties? Is one of them a favorite kitty? You don't like either one? I love both of them. Okay, what, what are their names? Sam and Roscoe. Sam and Roscoe. And did you have a birthday party? Yeah. Who was your best friend? Renee. Was there anybody at your party that you didn't want there? Yeah. Who? My brother. You didn't want your brother there? Mm-mm. Did you, did you have a cake? Mm-hmm. What kind of cake did you have? Vanilla. Vanilla. And did you play any games? Yeah. What'd you play? Pin the tail on the donkey. Did you win? Yeah. Did you cheat? No. And what was your favorite toy that you got? Did you get presents? A couple. Anything you like? No. Oh. <laughs> What's your most favorite thing? Finger painting. Finger painting? And what do you want to be when you grow up? A veterinarian. A veterinarian. Do you eat cereal in the morning? No. What do you eat for breakfast? Pancakes. Pancakes. Okay. Would you do me a favor? Would you come over here and just sit in that chair right there and fall asleep? Who's that a picture of? My daddy. Your dad? Do you have any pets at home? Uh-huh. What do you have? A dog. What's your dog's name? Tamika. Tamika. And who are you drawing now? My mommy. Oh, okay. Are you in school yet? Yes. Did you have a party? Yes. Who was your best friend? Eric. Eric. Was there anybody at your party that you didn't want? Yes. Who? Elizabeth. <laughs> Why didn't you want Elizabeth there? What's your most favorite of all your toys? My punching bag. Your punching bag. And you're in school? Yes. Do you like it? No. 
Oh, what don't you like about school? Elizabeth. <laughs> what does Elizabeth do that you don't like? She tries to kiss me. Is there anything you do like about school? Yeah. What do you like? Recess. <laughs> OK. Uh, let's go over here. and Maureen, can you tell me about your drawing? This is a house where I used to live in um, New York, when I used to live in New York. And I don't live there now. OK. And do you have any pets at home? Mm-hmm. What do you have? I have a, um, a dog. I've got a Labrador Retriever dog. and. His name's Blackie. Yes. Why don't you come up here and talk to me? And I've got a cat named Blackie. And a, and a cat named Blackie? Yeah, because I like my dog, Blackie. So I need my cat, Blackie. That make, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good idea. And uh, are, did you have a party? Um, yeah, I guess so. When I touch your forehead, you'll know exactly. You'll be five years old at your party if you had one. Did you have a party? Mm-hmm. Now, it was, your party was yesterday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, and who's your best friend? Um, my best friend is Jennifer. She and lives next door. She lives next door. And was there anyone at your party that you didn't want there? Mm-mm. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What was the most fun thing at your party? Um, I got these um, crayon things. They're like, they're, they're fun. Are you, are, you, are you in school yet? Mm-mm. No. no. Did you have a cake at your party, by the way? Yep. What kind? It was chocolate. Chocolate. And what do you eat for breakfast? Do you eat cereal? I eat Cheerios every day. Every day. Good. Yeah. You're six years old. Six. Are you in school? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do you like school? Mm, it's okay. What's your teacher's name? Mrs. St. Pierre. And you like Mrs. St. Pierre? She's okay. What is? What do you like about school the most? The work, I think. What do you like about it the least? Um, Paul Porco. What does Paul do? Paul used to be my boyfriend, only he really doesn't like me much now. Oh, so that's uncomfortable for you? It's what? Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think either an astronaut or um, an engineer. Good. You're a good girl. Just sit right down here. Sit and thank you. And, uh, and sleep. You got to sit up right away. You just got to sit up in your chair. Though. Stay sitting up in your chair, okay? Sleep. How you doing there? Fine. Do you want a little more time? Yes. Freeze, sleep. He just had a snippy edge to him. I don't know, as a kid. It's kind of two, you'll, you'll come over here, sit in the chair and fall asleep. One, two, right away. Just sit right there and fall asleep if you would. This is, this is like, oh yeah, oh wait, before you sit down. Whoop, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. Okay, sit down. <laughs> Sleep. Looks, <laughs> that's interesting, huh? Fun. So I never take people past five years old, uh, at least in this life. So at the count of three, you're coming back in time with me. Now, I'm going to ask this question again because as we move into this past life regression, this can get very, very intense. Um, I'm going to give you all a choice. Again, if you feel and would like to experience a past life, and this is a question to your subconscious, not even your conscious mind, if you'd like to experience it, and by experiencing it, you will grow, nod your head yes. Okay, good. Um, okay. You're coming back in time, you're 12, you're 15. Uh, Melanie, you're 18. Sean, you're 20. And Maureen, you're 20. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes. Everything will be back to normal. 
and you won't remember anything from this regression which would cause you any unhappiness or sadness in your waking life or your dream life. You will, however, remember all those things that could cause you a smile or make you feel good. One, two, three. Wide awake, guys. Hi, how do you feel? Tell him what his pet's name was. Whoa! Is that wild? <laughs> how, could, how, could, how could they know that? <laughs> what was her pet's name? Blackie. Blackie and Blackie. You don't even remember your pet's... Oh, never mind. How about this one? Remember Roscoe? You still have him. Oh, you still have him. You guys want to see how you wrote your name when you were five? Check this out. Were you aware of the audience during this? Huh? Were you, were you aware of the audience during this? No. Were you aware of the audience? Mm -mm. You all feel okay right now? Feel good? Great. Let's give them a big hand. <laughs> Would you two stand up for me? <laughs> you remember Elizabeth, eh? <laughs> you like her? No. Well, now I do, yeah. Now you do? Okay. Well, would you sit down in that end chair, right? Just sit right there. Just sit right here. Just go ahead and sit. Go ahead and sit. And sleep. Okay. Now, before I tell you this, before we do this, I want to be very clear about something. I am not advocating or saying the past life regression is real at all. It's either real or it's not real. The second thing I want you to understand is that this can be highly emotional. And if you know anything about past lives, if you don't, I'll tell you a little something that if the people that believe in this, the time doesn't exist. In other words, lives can actually be parallel lives. There could be someone living at the same time. Lives can overlap. Lives can, a, a man can be a woman. A woman can be a man. And some of you have seen this here before in the, uh, in the past shows where people have switched sexes. Now listen to me carefully. And again, nod your head yes if you would like to take the journey into a past life. Good. I want you to think of a fear or a phobia, a belief or a pattern of behavior that you believe in the deepest part of you experiencing that as a past life will help you both understand and make different choices in your present life that will enhance the joy of your life experience. I want you to, to think of that now and nod your head yes when you're thinking of it. Good. Now listen carefully again. I want you to surround yourself with a white light, a very healing protective shell of white light that only your guides and your masters can enter. You're standing at the end of a hallway. At the end of the hallway is a door. I'm going to count from five to one and you're going, that door will open and you're going to move through the door into one of your many thousands of past lives. It may be a long time ago. The images may be very clear to you. It may be at any point. You may be a child. It may be much later. Emotionally, you will be able to experience everything totally, even negative emotions, because I'll be with you. And you'll have always a choice how much you want to experience that emotion. When I touch you like this, that means I'm talking to you, and I'll ask you to answer questions with me. And when I'm talking to someone else, you'll just keep the whatever area you're in and uh, freeze that area. If you would like someone to stand with you in that hallway to guide you up and, and actually to the door, but not through the door, just to guide you to the door, nod your head yes. Good. That person is there with you now, someone you trust. So as I count from five to one, you will move up to and through the door. Five, four, three, two, one, now. You move through the door. 
Are you indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Describe what you see. People. How are the people dressed? Hats. Cowboy boots. Okay, at the count of two, you'll tell me the year. One and two. 1810. At the count of two, you'll tell me your age in this past life. And when I say the word now from now on, you'll just answer the question. One and two. Age? Your age? 22. 22. And your name? Billy. Indoors or outdoors? Indoors. Describe what you see. Uh, it's a, a dark brown room with a fire. With a fire? Are you alone? No. Who is with you? My husband. At the count of two, you'll tell me the year. One and two. 1724. And the country or state? Germany. How long have you been married? Eight months. Do you have any children? No. Are you pregnant? I don't know. Are your parents living? No. Are you happy? No. And why not? I don't love my husband. You don't love your husband? No. Is there anything that you would like to tell me about the specific point in time before we move forward? No. What is your name? Margaret. What's the state that you're in? Tennessee. What emotion do you feel most right now at this point in time? Anger. Why? You got my wife. Somebody what? have my wife. Do you know who it was? No. What do you intend to do? I can't move. Why? They have me. Why? They have me. They have you? They have you tied up? Yes. Yes? Is there anything else you would like to say move you before you move forward? to another point in time? Anything you'd like to express? No. At the count of two, you will move forward to the next most important event, negative or positive, in your past life. At the count of two, one, two. You're there now. What's taking place? What's taking place? He hit me. He hits you. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No. Okay, let go of that just for the moment. Let go of the emotion. Okay. What's taking place? A raping her. Who? Men. What? The men. What's your primary emotion? I can't move. They still have you tied? Yes. At the count of two, you're going to move forward to the next most important event now. One and two. How much later is it? Are you about to die? Yes. At the count of two, you're going to move forward in time to one minute before your death. One and two. Physically, what is wrong with you? Shot. Where? Chest. Okay. I'm going to take you into and through your death at the count of two. One, two now. Go right into it. Let it go. Let it go and sleep. And sleep. And release it. And let it go. Move forward in time to the next most important event, negative or positive now. What's taking place? <laughs> Tell me what's happening. I'm having a baby. <laughs> Go in it, through it, and you're over it now. Was it successful childbirth? Yes. Boy or girl? Girl. Happy? Yes. Good.
What is your relationship with your husband? None. None? Is he still around? Yes. The count of two, you're going to move forward. Next most important event, negative or positive, one and two. What's taking place? I think it's a funeral. Move backwards a week now. What's taking place for you? Are you healthy? Yes. Okay, move forward three days. Anything different taking place? Four days. Five days. Anything? <laughs> Back up four hours. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Nothing. Are you about to die? I don't Within the so. next week? No. Okay, at the count of two, you'll know whose funeral that was. One and two, whose funeral? It's my husband. What happened to him? He just died in his sleep. Did you have anything to do with that? I would have liked to. The count of two, move forward to the next most important event. One and two, what's taking place? I don't know. Why don't you know? I can't see anything. Back up a week. What's taking place? I don't know. Did you die? I think I'm sick. At the count of two, you'll know. One and two. Are you sick? You'll be able to project yourself outside of yourself and tell me the answer. I'm in bed. Are you sick? Yes. Very sick? I'm very old. How old? 73. At the count of two, you're going to move forward to one hour before your death. One and two. How old are you? 73. Are you alone or is there, are there, is there anyone around? My daughter. Your daughter, anyone else? Her husband and her two children. At the count of two, you're going to move in two and through your death. One and two. In two, through, and let it go. Good. And you're back here with me, seated on a stage. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes, and you will not remember anything from this past life which would cause you any unhappiness or sadness in your waking life or your dream life. You will, however, remember all those things that could make your life more joyful or happier. With every experience we have, in life, or before life, we learn from the imagination. It helps us grow, it nurtures us. And by going through and experiencing what you've just experienced, you have learned something that you can help make your present life more joyful. At the count of two, you will know what that is, and you'll be able to clearly state it in the form of a sentence or a simple statement. You will know and be able to tell me what you've learned. One, two. What did you learn from this experience? Not to get jumped. Not to get jumped? <laughs> what did you learn? No man will ever hit me again. Okay. Count of three, you'll open your eyes full of energy and feel wonderful. One and two, three. Wide awake, guys. How do you feel? Good. Feel good? Yeah. Feel okay? Yeah. Do you remember that? What? You don't remember any of the experience you just went through. Feel good, though. Good. You guys can go back and take a seat. Let's give them a big hand. I'm going to wind up the show with a couple thoughts. Number one, I want to tell you the reason that I do this show, that I continue to do it. The reason is to get you to think. It isn't to prove anything to you. It isn't to push any belief system on you. It's simply to get you to think. So that's my message for tonight. I hope to see you at the seminar tomorrow night. I hope to see you next year. And the last thing I have to say is... Good night and thank you, ladies and gentlemen.